the Mashiach answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will rise it up. Then said the Yahudims, Forty and six years was the temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture, and the word which Mashiach had said. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, and in the feast day, many believed in his name. When they okay, saw right there, okay. What time of the year is this? What month are we in? Abib. All right? We know, although he didn't give you the date, we know that this is the month of Abib. If he's at the Passover now, all right, what days are we talking about for the Passover? Obviously, he would be there before the 14th, correct? Because the Passover, uh, the Passover lamb is killed on the 14th, okay? And the Passover meal is actually eaten on the 15th, and it goes on for a whole week, all right? So we know that he's in Jerusalem in the month of the Abib, all right? Now, if he's in Jerusalem, all right, and the month of Abib, and two weeks before that, he was at Cana. Are you guys following me? Mm -hmm. Two weeks before that, he's at Cana at the wedding, all right? And it tells you that was the third day after he came out of the wilderness. What day did he come out of the wilderness? Now, on the tent. what's that? On the tent. On the tent? Scripture that uh, Daniel 9, 24, 25, 26. Is that the one? Where he gave us prophecy? Now, before you get that, get Ezra first. Give me Ezra first. Ezra the seventh chapter, the ninth verse. And then we'll go to Daniel. Good. Ezra 7 and 9. Second Ezra? Yes. No, no, that, that's the proper um, Ezra. Ezra in the Bible. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Ezra 7, chapter, verse 9. And then we'll go over to Daniel, uh, the 9th chapter. Yeah, you got nine? Okay, go ahead, three nine. For upon the first day of the first month we Stop right there. The first day of the first month. What time are we talking about? A beep what? First day. First day of a beep. A beep one. Go ahead, read it again. For upon the first day of the first month began he to go unto from Babylon, and on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem according to the good hand of his Elohim upon him. Okay. The first day of the first month. Read the, the, the 13th verse. I'm sorry. Uh, the, read the 13th verse. 13th verse. Yeah. I make a decree that all they of the people of Israel and of his priests and Levites in, the, in my realm, which are minded of their own free, uh, free will to go up to Jerusalem, go with thee. Okay. This is Officer Xerxes, all right, given the command for Israel to go up to Jerusalem. This is after they did the time for uh, uh, Babylon. They removed the captivity to Babylon. After Xerxes wrote a letter, all right, and he sent it out that, you know what, you guys have my permission to go up and rebuild the temple in Jerusalem, all right? When they began to go up to Jerusalem was in the month of Abib on the first day. Everybody follow me? That's why I read that. The first day in the month of Abib. Now, go to Daniels. Now. This is important. Go to Daniel, uh, the ninth chapter, where he gives uh, the, the 70s and 7s. Seven weeks. Yeah, the seven weeks. 924. Start reading from 924. You want me to read? Yeah, there you go. Oh, yes. I need to read. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, the transgression, and to make an end of sin, 
and to make a uh, reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteous righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy to anoint the, uh, the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem unto the, the Mashiach, the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again in the wall and even in troubled times. Okay, do me a favor, read that back over again from the beginning of that verse. Know therefore and understand that. Know therefore and understand, read. That from that going forth of the commandment. From the going forth of the commandment that we just read where Artaxerxes gave them command to go and uh, uh, rebuild Jerusalem. Go ahead. To restore and to build Jerusalem right. unto the Mashiach, the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score. Okay, unto the Mashiach, unto the coming of the Mashiach. He's giving you a time frame. So he's saying from the time that Artaxerxes, all right, give this command to go forth and build the command, all right, um, um, to the coming of the Messiah should be what? Shall be uh, se seven, uh, seven weeks and three score. Seven weeks and three scores. How many is that? Seven weeks and three scores. How much is that? Three scores, 60. Yes, three scores, 70. What's that? 67, is 72, is 69 weeks. 69 weeks. Okay? So, from the time that Artaxerxes gave that command to the coming of the Messiah, he's giving you a certain amount of years because his weeks measures in years and his weeks measures in days also. Right. All right? So my point is this. What was the date that Artaxerxes gave the command? The first of the beat. The first of the beat. So in the future, 483 years in the future, the Messiah is supposed to come. On what date? The first of the beat. The first of the beat. Okay? Yeshua was at Cana three days after he came out of the wilderness. Then he goes up to Jerusalem. All that happens in the month of Abib. The question is, when did Mashiach come out of the wilderness? Remember, three days later, he's at Cana. Messiah came out of the wilderness on the first of Abib, 483 years after Artaxerxes gave them that command. So this is prophecy being fulfilled when Yeshua comes out of the wilderness and goes to Cana and then goes up to Jerusalem. I'm not going to go into it any further than that because he's going to go into that whole thing next week when he talks uh, about the ministry of the Mashiach. But I'm just setting the stage in terms of the Abib. The idea is Abib first, when he gave them that command to go up to Jerusalem, the point is 483 years in the future, the Messiah was going to come on the scene. Although the Messiah was a designated person when he was born as a Messiah, he didn't become the Messiah until after he was baptized and was anointed. That's when he was officially the Messiah. When he went up to Jerusalem and did what he did, he was the Messiah. He was already anointed to be the Messiah at that specific point. That's the point I wanted to get to. All right, let's move on from there because I don't want to get too deep in the 70s and, and uh, breaking that whole thing down. Because he's going to touch that. All right, three days. And he's going to raise it up. Matthew 17, 23. And they shall kill him. And on the third day, what was going to happen on the third day? He shall, he shall, rise, he shall again. rise again. Now, does the scripture tell us when Mashiach rose from the dead? When did he rose from the dead? Some people say Sunday. All right? But the point is why we went through everything that we went through. If you could identify the day of the week that he was killed, you know exactly when he rose from the dead. And that's going to identify whether or not he is the Messiah. But you have to identify when he got killed, first and foremost. If he got killed on Friday, it is physically impossible for him to rise in three days and call it Sunday. It cannot work. It's physically impossible. That's the point. All right? 
I don't want to go read Jonah, but if you know Jonah's story, Jonah 117, it'll tell you what happened to Jonah and when it happened to Jonah in terms of the whale swallowing up. It did happen at night time, but again, I want you guys to go investigate that for yourself and see. You want to identify the day that the Mashiach got killed. That's going to be difficult to see here. But as Jonah was three days and three nights, three days and three nights in the whale's belly, the Son of Man was going to be three days, three nights in the heart of the earth. That's the point. Now, some people say the three days and the three nights weren't three literal days and three literal nights. That's what they say. One Israelite guy told me that, you know, that was just a parable for the amount of time that Yeshua preached. What? That's what he said. That's the amount of time. It was a parable for the amount of time that Yeshua preached. Yeshua was explicit. He made it clear that he was going to physically die on the third day he was going to rise again. On the third day. So we got to identify the first day when he got killed. All right? The, absolute, the Gospels are absolutely clear when he rose from the dead. This is just a chart showing the comparison between Mashiach and uh, 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 Jonah. They were both prophets. Uh, they both preached to Israel. All right? Uh, they, they both speak about uh, repentance. They were both presumed dead. And after three days, they were shown alive again, both of them. All right? And they never see corruption because, again, they didn't die. All right? So you can see the comparison between both of them. All right? And the reason why I put Northern Kingdom in parentheses up there to innovate, all right, if you read Tobit 1 and 3, all right, Tobit tells you he was in Nineveh. Israelites were in Nineveh. That's a lesson all by itself again. Uh, <clears throat> Mark 8.31, somebody pull it up to read it because I get this. it's impossible to see the screen now. Mark, is that right? Yeah, Mark 8.31. And again, he's expounding and he's telling you again, go ahead, you got it? Yep. Read it. And he began to teach them and that, that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and, the scri and, and scribes and be killed, and after three days, rise again. Continue. That's it? Yeah, that's, that was 31, yeah. Okay. It's difficult to see that. I don't even know what the screen is. Can you see what it says here? Yeah, it says uh, Matthew 12, 40, and then Jonah 1 and 17. You want to read uh, Matthew? Yeah, what, what is, read the screen, what okay. it's saying here. In order to decipher Jonah's parable, we must understand how the ancient Hebrew Israelites reckon time. The way Christians consider time can, can never be factored into Jonah's parable uh, description. description. All right, so when I say the way Christians reckon time, the whole idea from morning to morning and daylight, you can't factor that in. It's just not going to work, and you're going to be lost. That's why I put that up there. All right, so we want to decipher this whole thing with the three days and three nights. Uh, could you read that for me again? Sure. One, they can't see it, I can't see it. Yeah. One of the most ridiculous arguments that I've ever heard in regarding to Jonah's parable is that it is possible to count parts of a day as a full day, and thus the traditional viewpoint of the resurrection is correct using such methodology. Uh, yeah, so, so in other words, some people are saying, well, you don't have to be three days and three nights because, you know, sometimes in the scriptures, uh, a half of a day is counted as a day. All right. So when Jesus said or Yeshua said he was going to be three days and three nights, you know, maybe he didn't really mean three days and three nights. You know, this is the excuse because they know it is mathematically impossible to die on Friday and rise on Sunday, it can't work. So they came up with this ridiculous argument, well, it's not really talking about a day. Remember, he was specific, he said three days and three nights. He didn't just say three days to leave you wondering. He said three days and three nights to let you know he's talking about the full, quote unquote, 24 hour period of time and not half a day or half a night or anything like that. Three days and three nights. It's important for us to understand that. So there's no need for us to twist his word and say what Yeshua meant. He meant what he said and he said what he meant. All right, so we want to establish the beginning point and we want to establish the terminus point for us to be able to identify when the resurrection actually uh, 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 took place. What does that say? Assumes the Messiah, uh, well, traditional three-day 
uh, three-night Western Greek scenario, assumes the Messiah was crucified Friday afternoon between 12 and 3 p.m., traditionally refers to as Good Friday, buried in late afternoon evening before nightfall and approximately uh, 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 nightfall around approximately 6 p.m. The Enigmatic Jonah, Enigmatic book. Sorry, Jonah. Count must uh, count must begin. All right. Did you read that? Yep. Friday night would would then uh, would then be the first. At so, Saturday morning begins. Okay, so the Friday night, uh, if the Messiah was killed on Friday, Friday night uh, would be the first night, all right, that um, he's in the ground, or the first night that he's dead, right? Mm -hmm. And now, if he's dead on Friday night, counting it the way that we would normally count it, there's six hours until the Sabbath begins at midnight, 12.01, all right? So, Friday night is one night, all right? At Saturday morning begin. Uh, begins and at sunrise would begin the first daylight period of of, of of Jonah Enigma. 18 hours later, Saturday night, the second night of the count arrives and lingers for about six hours. All right, so 18 plus six, we've got 24 hours. So now let's see how long. Uh, continue reading now. Uh, this would be in parentheses at 12, 12, 12 1 a.m. Yeah, because they say the night begins at 12 1. Sunday morning darkness to sunrise is approximately 6 hours, 6 a.m., when supposedly the traditional resurrection occurred on Easter Sunday, which is the first day of the week and cannot be factored into the, the Jonah, Jonah Enigma account, account of three days, days and three, three nights, nights, considering the fact that the Messiah had already risen, according to Matthew 28. Verses 1 through right, because when Mary and him came to the grave, he was already gone. He wasn't rising, and they didn't witness him, him rising. He was gone. Okay, let's so let's look at this now. Friday night? Friday night was 6 p.m. Uh, minus uh, uh, 12 p.m., that's six hours. Saturday morning, dark hours, which is 12.01, that's six hours. Saturday morning day, daylight hours is 12 hours. Saturday night hours 6 p.m. through uh, 12 p.m. another six hours. Sunday morning uh, Sunday morning uh, dark hours, which is 12:01. That's right, because it six starts hours. at 12:01 uh, uh, at night mm -hmm. down to the daybreak. That's another six hours. And if this is confusing, it should confuse you because it don't make no sense. All right, <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping it, it does confuse you. Because I want you to see that it doesn't make sense. I want you to see it doesn't make sense. So Sunday rise on, you have the resurrection. That's okay? 36 hours. 36 hours. You think that that's what Shua meant when he said three days, three nights in the hall of the earth? He's talking about 36 hours. Why didn't he just say 36 hours? He could have said that. But he specifically said three days and three nights. And, and the point that we're going through all this is to show you that it's mathematically impossible for him to die on Good Friday and rise on Easter Sunday and fulfill the Jonah uh, 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 parable. It's impossible. It cannot work. Can you read that? Because I can't see it at all. Yep. According to the uh, traditional Western Gentile viewpoint of the resurrection, the Messiah would have only completed two nights and one day of the three day and three, three nights of Jonah's enigma death sentence a total of 36 hours so two nights and one day that's not what Yeshua said mm -hmm. so if that can't work that dude that rose on Easter Sunday is not the Messiah I mean is that simple he's not the Messiah it can't be because it doesn't fit and this is why we come up with this ridiculous idea that nobody could count half a day as a day that's not what Yeshua said. He said three days and three nights. Let you know that it's three nighttime periods and three daytime periods. Not two nighttime periods and one daytime period. It doesn't fit. Yes, sir. So basically, because um, now I'm starting to understand why, because um, I spoke to more of this album before, that I believe that daylight mm -hmm. determines when the day starts. But now understanding this here, I understand why day actually starts at night because it really wouldn't make no sense and he couldn't have fulfilled that prophecy if you were kind of the way we were kind of according to the day right. time. 
They make no sense at all. It couldn't fit. It would not fit with the scriptures. It gets better. Could you read after me? Because again, I can't see from over here. After close examination, it must be concluded that based on the traditional inter uh, interpretation of the Jonah's cipher set forth to the Jews, um, the Jesus, Jesus, the Jews, the Jesus of traditional Christianity yeah. couldn't possibly yeah. be the Messiah. Couldn't. Because it doesn't fit. Couldn't possibly be. Is this a different slide to the same slide? Read this one for me, please. If anyone calls themselves a follower of the true Mashiach, but continues to promote a Gentile interpretation of, of the Jonah parable, they are preaching of an imposter Mashiach, just as Paul said people would be doing in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter right. 11. Paul's talking about another Jesus. All right. So the idea is, again, if you are pushing this Easter Sunday thing and two days and one night and stuff like that, that dude is an imposter. He's an imposter. It just cannot work. All right, here goes the chart now. And this should tell the tale to show you how it works out. I can't even see it, but um, Friday, 60. Good Friday. See Good Friday? Yep. That's when Jesus died, on Good Friday, according to that. Look what he was buried. So you can't count the daytime portion because he's already in the ground. All right? So right next to it, you see the dark portion there? That would be the first night. Okay? Now this is the Sabbath according to them. All right? The Sabbath starts there. He's in the ground. One night, the first black portion there. Okay? This is the end of the Sabbath. All right? Saturday. Look when the resurrection happens. How many days and how many nights? If you could visualize that. Do you fit in there and does that fit? Is that what Jonah's talking about? It cannot fit. All right? Visually, when you look at it, let it sink in. It cannot fit. And this is doing it the way with morning to morning. See the daytime portion come first? Mm -hmm. See the daytime portion come first? Nighttime portion come first? Saturday day? Then night again? And I, it doesn't fit. It can't work. Mathematically impossible. That's what I want to get people to see. When you see it and you look at it in paper, it should sink in and start to make sense. It cannot fit. So it's almost like for you, you know, like the Western way of thinking, like when you stay in a hotel. Correct. It's <laughs> exactly. Three days, two nights. nights. Exactly. You stay, you have to get there Friday at 3 p.m. Right. But that's the one night. Is the right. Friday night. Jibbity, Saturday you know, night. You check out yeah. Sunday morning. Correct. So it's basically. But it doesn't work. It doesn't fit the parable. So if anybody came on the scene, now remember, this was the sign he gave them as proof as to whether or not he was the Messiah. He offered this up as proof. So if anybody came and died on a Friday and rose on a Sunday, you could rest assured that, you know what, that guy's an imposter. He's a false prophet. Get him out of here. Because he didn't fulfill the prophecy. Didn't fulfill the parable. All right. We see the Good Friday when he was buried. We see the Saturday. We see the end of the Sabbath. We see the resurrection. Friday afternoon. Again, a different perspective of it, laying everything out. If you could see the, and by the way, you guys can have a copy of this PowerPoint too. So you know, and even if you don't get an opportunity to write everything down, this way you can study it for yourself and research it, and um, you know, see for yourself. Like I said, I want you to be detectives and investigate this because again, somebody stole something. Remember. This is your heritage, you know? This is your inheritance. And somebody else is gonna get it if you don't wake up and, you know, take what's rightfully yours. Hypothetical Friday, again, Friday night, Friday day. Saturday night, Saturday day. Sunday night, resurrection day. Is that three days and three nights? No, the Messiah would have only completed three nights and two days. It doesn't work. It doesn't fit. Your Good Friday scenarios, any way you flip it, it doesn't work. And I flipped it different ways, it doesn't fit. 
his Sabbaths have fallen out. Look when he resurrected. Okay, this is talking about the preparation day. All right, every every feast day has a preparation day. Every holy convocation has a preparation day. And I say that to say this. All right, you're gonna have in Passover week. You're gonna have two preparation days, and you're gonna have two Sabbaths. Two preparation days and two Sabbaths. The holy convocations are called Sabbaths only because there are no work days. So the same thing that you would do on the weekly Sabbath day, you don't do on the holy convocations. All right. So in that sense, you view them, or we call them, annual Sabbaths, meaning they happen once a year. And that fits in when you read the New Testament and talks about the Sabbath, you have to identify what Sabbath they're talking about. And hopefully we get to read some of that before we close out. The day prior to the Holy Convocation, uh, name in the script is a preparation day for that partic particular Holy Convocation. Can you read that for me? Exodus 12, uh, verses 15 and 16. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread, even, even surely the first former day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. So they're saying the first day you should put away leaven out of your houses. What first day are they talking about? What's that? The first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They say the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You should put the leaven out of your house. Now, does that make sense? When do you put the leaven out of your house? <laughs> Before that. Before that. Right. But according to that, it says the first day. It says the first day you're to put the leaven out of your house. But the word first actually means former, meaning the day before. The day before the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you put the leaven out of your house. You don't put the leaven out of your house on the first day. And the reason why I bring this up is when you read Matthew 26, uh, Matthew, was it, 26, 17? Could you put that when the disciples uh, were sitting down with Jesus? It was about the Last Supper. And tell them to prepare the uh, Passover. I think it's the 26th chapter of Matthew. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Talmudim came to the Mashiach, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare thee to eat the Passover? Now, it says the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, they came to him and asked him, Wait up here. But the first day of uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you know, is the Passover. So obviously there's a problem there. It means the Passover already happened and the Messiah is still alive. So something is wrong. Now, the chapter before that, how many days till Passover? I tell you it was. That was 26, I think 25, it says it was two days. Uh, uh, the Passover was in two days. We have. Um, it said it was two days until the Passover. It was the chapter right before that. So the point is, the point of it that when it says first day, it's talking about the day before, or the former day. The day before the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you put the leaven out of your house. You don't put the leaven out of your house on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You have to put it out before. You don't wait until that day. When Yeshua went up to the temple after he came out of the wilderness, and he made that whip, and he was whipping them, and, and cleansing his father's house, he was cleansing the house of the leaven before the Passover. That's what he was doing. Getting rid of all the leaven, which was the nonsense that was going on there in the, uh, the house at the time. The first day or the day before uh, is the preparation day. So the 14th day, all right, is the preparation for the 15th day, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. All right, and again, evening starts the day or night starts the day followed by the morning. It's important for us to understand that or else we're not going to get it. Uh, could you see that and read that for me, please? Yes, uh, Matthew 26 and 17. That's what you just read? That's what we just read, right? Yeah, actually. 26 and 17. Uh, what it says to the bottom? Uh, based on the understanding of the meaning of the first day and the fact that the disciples asked where did the Mashiach want them to prepare, the Passover proves that it was the preparation day for the uh, 
uh, holy uh, convocation. convocation that was fast approaching the following day of the 15th of Aviv, which the Passover lamb was right. to be eaten. Because remember, that's the last supper they were talking about when he says, where shall they prepare the Passover? They were talking about the last supper. Could you read that again, um, uh, Matthew? Uh, uh, yeah, 26. Uh, 26. You're talking about talking about two days is the feast of Passover. Read that. Read that first. Okay. Um, what scripture? Say that. So it's twenty-six and um, one through two. And it came to pass when the Mashiach had finished all these things, he said unto his Talmudim, "You know that after two days is the feast of Pet Passover, and the Son of Man is, is betrayed to be crucified." All right. So he said after two days. What scripture? What was that? Uh, uh, Matthew the twenty-sixth chapter, verse two, one and two. 26 and 2. Now read the uh, 27 with the first day. Uh, now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, right. the, de the disciples came to the Mashiach, saying to him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the we Passover? We prepare for you to, so they were still preparing to eat the Passover. Still preparing to eat the Passover. All right, continue to read down Psalm 26 for me, please. And he said, Go. Oh. Go ahead. And he said, Go and see the and he said, Go into such a man and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as the Mashiach had appointed them, and they made ready, that the word they had ready, the Passover. And when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. All right, when the evening was come, they made ready the Passover. Now the evening comes, he sat down to talk. Continue reading. Right, the ready is a um, preparation. Right. And, um, and when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, um, Elohim, or Sovereign, is it I? And he answered and said, he that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth, as it is written of him. But woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, You have said. And as they were eating, the Mashiach took bread, and broke it, or bread, uh, bread, blessed it, and, and broke it, and gave it to his Talmudine, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of it. This is my blood of the renewed uh, testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not henceforth drink of the fruit of the vine, until the day when I drink it new with you in, in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung in him, they went out of the Mount of Olives. Then said the Mashiach unto them, All you shall be offended because of me this night. What night is this that we're talking about? What date is it now? Now this will be really important. What date is this? What's that? He's still alive. Still alive. Remember that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the fourteenth when? At night time. Remember, he's still alive. They're supposed to be eating the Passover. According to Christianity, that evening they sat down, they're eating the Passover. But we know it can't be the Passover because the Mashiach is still alive. Remember, the Passover lamb is killed on the fourteenth in the daylight portions. Here we have Yeshua at nighttime portion. This is before he got arrested. Because he gets arrested at what time of the day? What time? Three. Now, what time of the day? Daylight portion or nighttime portion? Daylight portion. What time did he get arrested? Yes, what time was Yeshua arrested? Yeah, he was arrested in the nighttime portion of what day? Of the 14th. Remember, he's not killed until the daylight portion. All right, I'm going to continue going. Don't end the minute. 